Hey everyone, my name is Ray Ko. I'm on the Azure Global Black Belt team covering uh, developer experience and platform engineering. Uh, in this video, we're gonna cover GitHub Advanced Security, Azure DevOps, and Microsoft Defender for Cloud, specifically DevOps Security. Um, we're gonna go through the personas and workflows, uh, so the different types of roles that likely will be using these tools. Uh, I'm gonna do an overview of what GitHub Advanced Security is. Um, you may also hear GitHub Advanced Security Azure for Azure DevOps, uh, which is the GitHub Advanced Security version for Azure DevOps. Uh, also do an overview of Microsoft Defender for Cloud, again, specifically DevOps security, uh, how they integrate. Uh, so how does uh, Microsoft Defender for Cloud integrate with GitHub Advanced Security, and, as well as uh, Microsoft Defender for Cloud uh, integrating with GitHub Advanced uh, Security for Azure DevOps. And then I wanna run through an example of secret scanning in your given repository. So just to start off, you know, you're probably thinking, you know, what is the difference between developer and someone working in cybersecurity? Aren't they the same person? Yes, no, depends on your organization. Um, typically one person, the developer is running applications, right? So your, your line, of, line of business apps, right? If you're a bank, it's probably your retail applications itself. And then your cybersecurity team, they're more interested in looking at the logs, whether any attacks against their network, uh, ensuring firewall rules are up, um, that, that sort of thing. Um, they're also probably managing devices, uh, checking for malware, viruses, that kind of thing across the organization. Um, should they be one and the same? Uh, I think the cognitive load might be a little bit high to do both roles. Are there people who do, do that? Absolutely, but you know, typically on a day-to-day, -day, they are two distinct roles. And so with that in mind, we're gonna jump into it and talk about uh, GitHub and GitHub Advanced Security. So GitHub, as you hopefully are aware, um, is a social coding platform. Originally, that's what uh, uh, it, it was sort of stated to be. Um, it is a, at heart, a, a Git repository that is managed on your behalf that also provides a num number of features and values on top of just being a, a Git server. Uh, in this particular case, we're gonna be talking about the security aspects that GitHub provides for you uh, from GitHub Advanced Security perspective. Um, so that's a, a feature service uh, added on on top of GitHub, and it provides you essentially three dimensions of additional uh, greatness uh, to using GitHub. Uh, Dependabot, or uh, dependency uh, scanning, essentially, which checks, uh, given your source code, the additional packages that you're using, whether or not they themselves have any additional um, uh, vulnerabilities detected. Uh, code scanning, so the code that you actually write, it's able to query against or create a database against your source code to see if there's any potential uh, attack vectors that have been introduced because of the code you've written. Not that it would ever happen to you. Um, we can also check for secret scanning. So uh, maybe you hard-coded a connection string of some sort, an API key from a cloud provider, uh, the list goes on and on. Secret scanning is able to uh, recognize uh, specific patterns from providers and, and keys and be able to alert you on that, all right? So what does this experience look like? They're gonna be very similar from GitHub and Azure DevOps, so I'm just gonna spend more time on the GitHub side and then kind of walk, quickly walk through on the Azure DevOps side. But uh, uh, first off, it's dependent bot. So for, for most of this experience, what you're gonna see under the security tab here, is this uh, vulnerabilities alert, right? You're gonna see sort of the indicator in terms of uh, have you turned on some of these features or whatnot in the overview. But more importantly, we're gonna go into Dependabot here and take a look at what we got. So in my particular demo repository, this is you know a cooking show. I've created an app um, and it already has a, um, a moderate severity uh, vulnerability. And I can click on it and be able to see uh, because uh, GitHub itself has the GitHub Advisory database connected to this after the scanning, it can check to see, okay, what, what in particular is this uh, really about? It's one thing to alert, but we want some details. Uh, how vulnerable is my code? What's the impact of my organization? What are the things that I can do to fix, remediate, patch, uh, to, uh, to fix this, right? So, uh, and I can go into further details in terms of the particular CVE or CWE in this case, uh, as to what uh, the issue is, is it similar to other things, et cetera. Lots and lots of information. Uh, what it can also provide you is the ability to um, uh, score or, or determine, you know, how bad is this uh, vulnerability? 
In some cases, it's about balancing out what is the risk. Because when it comes to cybersecurity, it's sometimes about evaluating how much risk are you willing to take on? Is this risk even applicable to me? Uh, if this is an internal app only, it's not exposed to the internet, then my, my risk, my, my vulnerability, the, the way uh, this could be exploited is probably pretty low, right? Maybe, but you have to determine that. So this kind of helps you see a view of that. Um, you can com convert this into an issue or make it related to an issue, your, your typical kind of flow that you would normal, normally do in um, your, your source control tool of choice. Uh, you can do that all throughout here. What you can also do is dismiss the alert. So I don't want it to show up in my dashboard anymore. If it was just like a dismiss, most people just kind of hit click and let it go. This will create an audit trail as well. So you can put in a reason behind why. These are the out of the box reasons that you can choose this, dismiss it and so on. So that is a path for you when it comes to dependency. Um, well, the next thing you'll we'll probably want to see is code scanning. So, you know, you, you would think you'd write great code, but perhaps you don't. And sometimes in some cases it may not be related to you as well. It could be related to a dependency issue, but uh, there are critical uh, vulnerability exploits that are uh, listed here, uh, medium, high, medium, low. In this case, I've only got medium uh, in this uh, particular repository. And I can, again, click onto these, use additional tools to generate queries against my code and be able to tell me what, what exactly is going on in here uh, and where is, is this potentially affected, okay? Um, uh, some details about this behind the scenes. We're not going to go into it too deep. There are other videos online uh, that are better suited for it. But for code scanning itself, uh, what it does is these alerts, all the reporting here um, is generated via Serif files. So um, through GitHub Advanced Security using CodeQL, you run a, in this case, GitHub action um, in a particular step. You can use the CodeQL um, step uh, or agent or plugin uh, that will then scan through your actual source code. Uh, if it's compiled, it'll, it'll uh, you know, in languages like C-sharp or Java, where you have to have a compiled artifact, it'll run query or build a, a database against that uh, application that's been compiled. If it's interpreted, it'll run through the code accordingly. At the end of the day, it'll generate a database to which you can run queries against um, and then generate a serif file, which is how we report the, the, the findings and upload that into code scanning. Um, and in code scanning itself, it will materialize itself as a report like this. And so what you can do is, again, see which branches are affected. Uh, you can check to which particular commit. Uh, perhaps it's something that gets reintroduced. So in this particular case, it is, hasn't been reintroduced. It just shows you the first uh, detection of this particular commit from two weeks ago. Perhaps you go through the process of creating an issue, remediating this particular alert. And then weeks later, somehow it pops back up again. You can actually see a history of this, an audit trail, who did what, etc. In addition to that, similarly to uh, dependent, a dependent bot or dependency scanning, you can also um, choose to dismiss the given alert. Um, sometimes it won't fix because it's not relevant. Maybe it's a false positive, um, or maybe it is uh, used in, produ in, uh, in, in tests against your production environment, or uh, pardon me, it's not used in a production environment. Um, uh, no matter what your, your reasoning is, you can uh, put it in here accordingly. All right. Um, lastly, I want to talk about secret scanning and then later on we'll go through a demo. Here again, it does pattern recognition. It's able to tell you in the actual alert itself what it thinks or it was able to recognize as the likely um, API key, secret, password, whatever you want to call it, that is uh, potentially leaked. And it's not just in the latest commit, it actually goes through your commit history. It can tell you where about uh, did it occur and then how many instances, was it multiple commits that was reintroduced, et cetera. And then you can go back and uh, change that through your normal Git flow in terms of reading that. Hopefully, uh, this is not something that's been around for very long. And you, you can have to determine what your exposure risk was as well, but you can go through this and change it up. Um, these are uh, the out of the box sort of alerts. So it can't detect for everything and we're adding more and more working with vendors, other cloud providers, um, uh, other uh, security um, uh, analysis tools 
to determine you know what new keys may 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 or may not be. Um, there's also an advanced feature to allow you to create your own regex. So should you have some kind of internal pattern uh, that you want to recognize to introduce into the system as well, so that it can generate the alert. Okay. Um, what we can do is, is, as well in here is to choose to uh, say why this may or may not be closed at some point. Like perhaps you go through a commit history, scrub it. Okay, fantastic. Uh, uh, you can you may not need to do that, right? Maybe the key has been cycled, so it's been revoked. Perhaps it's a fake key. Maybe it's just used in tests. Maybe it's a false positive. Maybe somehow it turned out that that's not in fact. Like maybe you have some kind of st uh, string or text that you're using. Uh, maybe this might be a salt that you're using um, it to generate passwords or secrets. And therefore, it looks like a Google API key, but in fact, it's not false positive. Or again, maybe you won't fix it because you're probably me writing the code and you got lazy. I'm just not going to deal with it because I, I think it's fine. Um, and then you're, you'll be in the news someday uh, for doing that. Um, no, regardless what your reason, those are all, all your options and choices that you can go down Okay, to do that. Um, from a GitHub advanced security perspective, I already have this open, but uh, you go to repos just like you would in GitHub. You Instead of the, it being a security tab at the top, instead what you have is a uh, advanced security option in the menu under repos. And now you can have some essentially the same kind of workflow that's going on here, right? I can see you know high, medium, low criticality in terms of the alerts. I can click on it. It gives me again, similar sort of um, advisory that's in here. How like how does this affect my system? What are the things I can do to fix it, et cetera, et cetera. I can also see where uh, it may be it may have been detected, how long ago, uh, and so on in here. Just like I could in GitHub. Um, not to go over everything, but uh, it also includes code scanning, similar uh, type thing. In my particular case, there's no bad code that I've written. Um, it's a, a different demo altogether, and then. It can also show you uh, secrets that have been exposed. So in this case, it's a very similar secret to my other example. It's only one in this particular repo, but um, here it is. Uh, here's what, what we got. All right. So from a cybersecurity side of the house, so that's that's a developer workflow, right? Everything's in Git, source control. It scans my code as it's being built. I'm a, a cybersecurity analyst, and perhaps I haven't been a developer. I'm not a developer, um, uh, and so. So what, who cares, right? Like that's a developer's problem. But as a cybersecurity analyst, you're probably responsible for a more holistic view of security and balancing out risk for, for your organization. Or maybe, you know, it's your job to, to, to do your research, figure out where potentially, you know, you need to focus on some, uh, some areas or maybe you read um, about a particular CVE, list goes on and on. Anyways, I, I digress. What you can do instead is you can go into uh, Microsoft Defender for Cloud, okay? And under Defender for Cloud, there is the DevOps security option for you under Cloud Security. When you click on that, you can actually add environments, um, GitHub, Azure DevOps, GitLab. In today's case, we're only gonna be talking about GitHub and Azure DevOps. We're gonna take a look at uh, the repository of Azure DevOps in particular, and lo and behold, it shows me some recommendations in here. Not only does it show me recommendations, it'll show me the status overall of that given recommendation, right? Um, in my case, one of these that are healthy in green is the fact that I actually have Gaz for Azure DevOps or Gazdo, Gazdo enabled for my given uh, Azure DevOps repository. So that's good. What's bad or what it's able to discern is that, oh, I in fact have secrets, just like I saw a second ago in GitHub itself, it knows that I in fact have secrets exposed in that repository. And I can drill down a little further and I can see similar information that was listed in, in uh, um, Azure DevOps in my Defender for Cloud dashboard. I can go to the actual repository, right? Or view the, the actual finding itself, which would, if I click on that, lead me back to the same, uh, the exact same page, essentially. The URL is a little bit different, but you know, same idea, same uh, alert. I can also click on this and go to the exact file uh, and line that it actually occurs in. Now, all right, so what? Who cares, right? Like, I'm, again, I'm a cybersecurity analyst. I'm not writing code. I don't own the code. What, what does it matter to me? Well, what you can do is you can actually assign an owner 
to remediate this, right? So in here, I actually assign an owner, I can click take, take action. I can also trigger a, a logic app to potentially automate and remediate the, this for me or trigger a series of events that you know pulls a, a fire alarm in the middle of the night and get someone on it as soon as possible. Whatever that might be, again, I'm just gonna pick on the assign owner version of this anyways, because triggering our logic app and that whole workflow is a, a video for another day. I'm just gonna assign this to someone. So I can select an owner. Of course, this assumes that it's someone in um, uh, Microsoft Entra, uh, the artist formerly known as Azure Active Directory. And I can uh, search for someone here. I wanna assign it to myself. Uh, I can hit back. Uh, I can create a grace period. I can hit a do, do, uh, do by date. Uh, I can notify owners and I can notify, you probably wanna, don't wanna do this, but you can notify direct manager weekly on overdue tasks that that particular uh, developer may uh, have been uh, delayed on, all right? I wanna hit save. That'll create that email workflow and automation until that particular task is remediated, all right? Um, all right, so that's great, right? So that's sort of the two ends uh, of the house. Uh, again, if I go back to um, Defender for Cloud, DevOps Security, I can uh, also see in my Git repositories, because perhaps my organization own, owns both, right? I allow my development teams to pick and choose. I can click further on to that. It provides me the same things, right? Checks, I can go in a little further. I can see the same uh, code scanning uh, or dependency code and code scanning vulnerabilities I may have. Go on, click on those, same kind of idea more descriptions, click on links, goes on and on. All right, so I have this. All right, this is good. How does this actually end up working, right? How do, how do I connect the dots? So when I add an environment, it'll go through an OAuth sort of cycle. So I would, in order to attach this environment in the first place, be uh, have the right permissions, usually uh, an admin or organization owner on um, the GitHub or the Azure DevOps side, as well as the proper permissions on the Microsoft Defender side. So it's not just as easy as just being able to add it. You need to have some of the credentials that will, can establish this connectivity on your behalf. Once that's established and there's documentation around that, how, does, how do we get that telemetry in here? Like how does Defender know the exact same information that's in uh, um, GitHub Advanced Security or GitHub Advanced Security for uh, Azure DevOps, GASDO? Uh, well, it actually pulls the same information via the API that is in uh, GAS or GASDO. And it also relies on the serif files that are being generated. Um, so basically the flow is in your pipeline or workflows or actions, uh, your um, advanced security agent, right? Essentially code QL will query against your source code. That source code could be, you know, Java, JavaScript, etc., cetera, uh, Ruby, you name it generates a database, you can run queries against that database, generates a serif file, serif file gets uploaded into GitHub Advanced Security, code scanning, dependency scanning, uh, secret scanning, etc. Then it generates this alert. This same alert can then be exported via, and I'm gonna show you in a sec if I go to manage extensions, via the Microsoft uh, Defender, uh, or it's a Microsoft Security DevOps build task agent which then runs through a series of its own tests and also is sort of the connectivity piece uh, along with OAuth authentication that you have to send information back and forth uh, between the two environments. The cool thing in terms of this pipeline, so if I actually go back for a sec, um, is that a given pipeline, and I'll just pick on the MDC, Microsoft Defender for Cloud uh, one, I edit this. Um, what I'm able to do with this is, okay, I can trigger whenever I push code into it. I can have the MDC agent um, or Microsoft Security DevOps agent itself run the given tasks that I need to. Um, it's able to do infrastructure as code scanning uh, among uh, other uh, uh, analysis against my uh, repository. It doesn't actually do static code analysis. That's what we're leveraging GAS for. And so this is where there's sort of this uh, synergy between the two, right? One tool all of the box is again, more on the cybersecurity and anal analytics side of things. Did I misconfigure my infra infrastructure as code, configuration for networking? Am I not using best practices there? So it'll use tools to scan that. It, it doesn't make any opinions in terms of how you do static code analysis 
um, on the code of the actual application side, right? So it'll generate the information independently and be able to generate alerts for you to consume both in your source control tool of choice as well as Microsoft Defender for Cloud, all right? What I also can include here is the ability to uh, add this as something that gets triggered during a pull request. So I also include this here. Why is this important? Um, number one, let's say your cybersecurity analyst person is on vacation and what I would like to do or like to have instead uh, is for um, this to occur uh, on my behalf while that person's out of the office. And so what I've done earlier, and I'll just do it completed, is that um, the Defender for Cloud portion of it today only does infrastructure as code scanning, uh, but it can generate pull request annotations. And so by the sheer fact that it's in your pipeline or you've created the pipeline for it, uh, and you've created a build policy as well that it must run and pass, you can uh, annotate or add comments in line to your pull request here, as you notice, created the pull request. This has already been, of course, accepted or approved. But in here, I can see the agent itself generates this information to tell me, okay, here are some things that the tool itself um, is aware of. So Microsoft Defender for DevOps, uh, artist formerly known as, it's now Microsoft Defender for Cloud, DevOps Security. Um, it generates this information that you can see in line that is in line with the developer's workflow, right? So all good stuff here. You can also do the same. It's a little, little bit more complex for you to do in terms of Autonomous Box experience, but you can do that with other tools that you may be incorporating in pipelines as well into a pull request just like this, okay? As long as it's uploaded as a serif file to advanced, GitHub Advanced Security, all that information also gets sent to Defender once you've got the connectivity in place. And so while today the recommendations you see in here are very much related to, to GAS and the CodeQL scanning and, and such, in the future, what you're going to be able to see are additional recommendations that Defender is able to provide to you based on the uh, serif files, the CodeQL queries um, that are generated, and then creates a serif file that gets uploaded to GitHub Advanced Security. All right. Okay, cool. So that's all in great. We see that in the pipelines. We ha also have a similar pipeline for uh, the actual CodeQL scanning itself. So if I just click on, oops, if I actually go back in, just take a look at this in, um, in uh, Azure DevOps itself. There's nothing too complicated about it. I have the ability to choose the language or languages that I wanna scan against. Um, in this case, I've just selected Java. Again, I could do uh, a number. Here's some supported languages here. C Sharp, C++, Go, Java, JavaScript, Python, Ruby, and Swift. Um, what it also allows me to do is to run um, out of the box query suites that are generated by the good folks at GitHub and the security team there um, that have particular query suites. So number of queries that are sort of compiled together that are run together as one unit. Um, or if you want to generate your own queries, which you can, if you want to go through CodeQL, it's got a site documentation, its own syntax and language. Perhaps you want to generate your own queries against your uh, source code. Um, it makes sense of what's going on. If that's the case, you can choose to uh, run essentially uh, your own custom queries. Uh, these are known as packs. Um, you can do so. You can reference it from a source control library that you have uh, access to within your given organization. Um, but in Azure DevOps, that's done through a configuration file. In GitHub Actions, you can actually specify that in line as a property. So there's a little bit of a, a difference in terms of how the agents work in that sense there. All right. Once I've initialized the actual task or agent, uh, what I can also do is then, uh, uh, what I'll need to do is I need to compile if I need to, if it's Java or C++ or a .NET app, um, I need to compile the application to run the query against. If it's an interpreter language like Python or Ruby, uh, it'll, it doesn't need to go through the compile step. Um, if you're lazy like me, you can opt to use the out of the box experience of the auto build task that uh, the advanced security code QL agent provides for you, or you can run your given Maven task in this case if you wanted to, uh, et cetera. Um, what then you will need to do, so that generates a database, okay? So it gen generates a database about your code base behind the scenes, and then the dependency scanning uh, here, so dependent bot or dependency scanning in Azure DevOps, it will then run or run queries against that database, 
that has been generated against your code, uh, and then analyze, and, uh, and then you can do uh, the code analyze, analyzing and then generates the serif files, which then are the results, which then get uploaded to get advanced security for code scanning, dependency scanning, et cetera, to generate the alerts that we saw earlier in, in the dashboard. Um, same, similar process on the GitHub side. So if I just look through, I've got more uh, workflows on the GitHub side here, but uh, you'll see you know, code scanning is gonna be very similar in that sense, code QL, uh, initialize, analyze, all that good stuff. Check out the repository, initialize code QL, uh, run the auto build agent again, and then perform the actual analysis against um, my repository. All right, that's all in good. So I'm just gonna run it through a demo now just to show uh, one additional aspect about this. So either in GitHub um, or in Azure DevOps, I have the capability, I'll go back maybe into Azure DevOps here to show. I can go into my given project, I can go into repositories, I can click on a given repository or apply it to all repositories, but I can turn on advanced security. More specifically on the repository, I can actually, instead of just allowing a secret to go through and then alert, uh, alert myself or my team or anyone that it exists, I can just block it, just block it automatically. And so what this allows, if I tick this box in which I have, is that if I introduce a new uh, secret into my repository um, by accident or on purpose, whatever it might be, this setting would automatically reject it at the commit, or sorry, the, uh, at the push, get push step of my usual flow of things. And so, and when I try to simulate that here, I'm on a particular branch. Uh, this uh, this revert fixes branch um, that I've been working on, just because I, I revert my demo every so often, so I can reuse it. And I'm just going to introduce a new key, just basically uh, change the value there. And I want to go git add a git commit m uh, demo introduce. Um, uh, secret and then I want to try to push it to my given repository and what we're going to see is that the push here if I just maximize this uh, and collapse that what you're going to see is that in uh, in the commit itself or the attempted push that is to say it gets blocked right so it actually provides me uh, push protection is what's causing it right it's going to say that it detected uh, Stripe live API key in this given file on the given line one, right? And so on, so that I can go and fix this. So what I can do instead uh, to fix it, so this prevents it, didn't even go into that um, uh, branch. The history is not pushed up. What I can do instead then, let me close this back down. I'm going to uh, just undo my changes not a uh, secret again because I've run this multiple times I want to clear this out at the bottom here I'm just going to do a git add dash a git commit dash dash amend uh, I'm going to just amend this message demo did not introduce a secret again Exit out, yes. And then what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna do a git push. And all is good because I, I, I fixed that particular uh, accident. Hopefully it was an accident. Hopefully it wasn't on purpose. Uh, and it, I'm able to actually push uh, the code up accordingly, all right? Um, there is a slight difference though. Um, there are cases, again, where um, if I wanted to actually introduce that on purpose, Say, for example, it's documentation and the key isn't actually real or revoked it. Maybe it's an old key that I'm, I'm just using for whatever reason. Probably shouldn't do that. You should probably come up with a contrived one that you're just changing the values for and make it fake. Um, but anyways, uh, it could still detect. And if you want it to go through, then what you can do is in, um, in Azure DevOps, there is a particular annotation to use in your commit message. Um, I'll, I'll leave a link in that in the description below because I cannot remember it for the life of me off the top of my head um, uh, to add that, uh, that um, particular wording in a commit message in there. 
If it was the GitHub side of things, that's actually a little bit uh, more of a smoother experience because what it does as part of the uh, terminal output here for my git command is it actually provides me a link that I can click on that then sends me to a web experience that allows me to select the reason why, similar to what we saw earlier in terms of our dependency alerts and code scanning alerts, uh, as to the reason why, add a message in there as well, and then to allow that particular commit through so that I can do a git push again a second time uh, instead of having to do an amend, and it'll push that whole history up uh, into uh, my repository accordingly. Now, it'll still generate an alert in terms of audit trail behind the scenes. It won't show up in the dashboard as a you know high criticality or anything like that because we've already closed it out. But there's a trail to be able to see that, oh, in fact, we, we did something to say, yes, allow it through and the reasoning by, uh, why behind it. And so if you need to generate, very likely if you're a regulated uh, customer, you need to generate a report around your code, that is there for you as an uh, option via, via and accessible through the GitHub uh, Advanced Security APIs. All right. So that's been the whirlwind tour in terms of the demo. Uh, hopefully, if you're coming from the Defender side, you'll see a reason why you want GitHub Advanced Security, or at least to investigate why you want GitHub Advanced Security, either in GitHub or Azure DevOps. If you're on the Azure DevOps side, and perhaps you don't live in cybersecurity, but your cybersecurity folks are constantly asking you like what's going on and whatnot, you may want to suggest to them that if they already have Microsoft Defender, or if they don't, they may want to investigate it so that they, you're able to provide this you know, channel of communication without constantly you know, uh, being unfortunately harassed in some cases about what's going on, how, how you're writing code, etc. cetera. Um, if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out on socials. I'm usually found as uh, Ray Co. Uh, or if you have, uh, more importantly, uh, an account uh, person from Microsoft or the GitHub side, uh, either either way, you know, we can start the conversation about security and, and hopefully meet somewhere in between there and uh, make our, our, all of our lives easier by not introducing any uh, new vulnerabilities or exposing any secrets in our environment. Uh, I've been Ray Ko. Um, I'm on the Azure Gold Black Belt team, and I thank you very much for your time. Take care.